Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on. Zach, uh, let me dive straight in. Uh, your PhD thesis was entitled The Invention of Palestine. And as the title indicates, you place a lot of importance on the fact that the concept of Palestine was, quote unquote, invented. In your eyes, is that a good thing or a bad thing? So I would say all places are invented. Countries, regions, states, counties, lands, none of these things exist in nature. It's neither a good thing nor a bad thing. It's just a reality of, of living in complex societies with complex identities. When you have complex societies, you need places. You need these invented places. Why, why, why do we need invented places when you have complex societies? Think of just like any state or any society. How is it you can function in a society without naming places? Like, hey, David, let's let's meet up in Polanco. Well, if you don't know what Polanco is, then how are we going to be able to meet there? Like, hey, Dave, let's let's meet up in, in Amsterdam in, in, uh, in January. If, if that's an unintelligible word to me, then we're just not going to be able to communicate. Right. How is it that you govern a, a place or a space right. without being able to tell your uh, direct reports uh, or communicate to your commander? Hey, we were unable to conquer Palestine. How, how is it that you can even have a chain of command? How is it that you can <laughs> conduct operations of a state right. without dividing that state into different lands or right. different territories or different counties? I mean, you're, you're talking about nationalism or, uh, you know, the, the way uh, what Benedict Anderson would describe as the imagined community, right, on the one hand. Um, but the problem is, of course, uh, on the one hand, we all know that all nations are invented. On the other hand, when you stress that in a certain way, then you might find yourself in trouble because, hey, of course, my nation sort of precedes history. My nation precedes, uh, you know, anything else that's been around forever. So uh, it feels a little bit like there's a little bit of a provocation in your title when it comes to when it comes to that aspect of nationalism. You're you're absolutely right about that. There's this perception, as you point out, that there's somehow there's something somehow problematic or illegitimate about an invented identity. By the way, all human identities are invented. I identify as Jewish. I'm a proud Jew. I go to synagogue sometimes. I make Shabbat dinner sometimes. By the way, Judaism is invented, okay? Human beings invented it. And, and I'm still Jewish and I'm still a proud Jew. There's nothing wrong with being proud in an invented identity, right? So that's the first point I would make. Right. The second point I would make, though, is that I don't think it really matters, right? Like what what we call these places to this question of like, you know, does it matter that this is an invented identity or an invented place? Well, I don't think so. If we call it Israel or if we call it Palestine or if we call it Judea or Samaria or Eretz Israel or Bilad Isham or the land of Canaan, like I don't think it really makes any difference at all. I mean, th think about, for example, like Does it matter if we call this Jack Herrera or Sour Diesel or Bubba Kush or Gelato? Like, it makes no difference at all, right? We just made these things up. Well, these are just it, it, it might make a difference in sort of how it uh, how, how much of a how much of a high it gives me, but I'd have to do I, I'd have to look into that. Exactly right. So we use these words, these strings of sounds and syllables. We use them because we need to use them because in order for human beings to communicate. Uh, intelligible ideas from one human being to another human being, we need to use these words that refer to complete inventions, completely invented ideas. And that's the nature of human communication. That's the nature of human language. Um, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. What I would say, though, is that this random string of sounds and syllables that we have to arbitrarily invent and create and use, even though it's arbitrary and thus it should be irrelevant, Unfortunately, it is not irrelevant. Right, right. And I mean, that actually brings me to the second question that I wanted to ask you, because um, part of your research is actually a meticulous tracing of the different names the region of Palestine has had throughout history. And uh, the question that uh, poses itself there sort of relates to what you were just saying, because why exactly is it so important what we call a place? These arbitrary sounds, these arbitrary strings of sounds, they actually do have real world implications. So let me just give you a few examples. When Israel conquered the West Bank and Gaza uh, in 1967, it shut down the Bank of Palestine. And then when it was set to allow that Bank of Palestine in Gaza to reopen in 1980, the Israeli army required the Bank of Palestine to change its name. Now, let me ask you, what was so problematic about the name the Bank of Palestine? Well, from the point of view of the Israeli army, it, quote unquote, endangered Israeli security. You heard that correctly. The word Palestine being used in the name of a bank was endangering Israeli security. 
Palestine, 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 Palestine. Alert! Anyone listening to this podcast, you have 15 seconds to find shelter before you get hit in the face by my saliva. Okay? <laughs> that, oh, it's, it's, it's such a ridiculous concept that a word that refers right. to a space or a territory or land is right. dangerous, right? But here we are living in a place, living in this country where, in fact, they, they're criminalizing the use of a word, of, of, of this particular specific word referring to this land, right? So right. even though it's arbitrary and that we made it up and that's invented, well, Clearly, some people think this arbitrary word has like really important implications in the real world. If you look at, for example, Chance the Rapper, a very popular rapper based out of the UK, he has a song where he he talks about Palestine all throughout the song. And the BBC was showing this music video once. And there was this huge controversy whereby the BBC was bleeping out the word Palestine as, as if it was a curse word because they must have had some like pro-Israel pundit on staff who's like, oh, my God, like. The, pal- the word Palestine is so dangerous. This is inciting to violence, right? Like, so, so we live in this world where the word Palestine is being criminalized. It's being treated as a curse word. Yeah. Free Palestine from the river to the sea. You, Mark Lamont said that on, on CNN and he got fired. Right. Why is it that right. saying the word Palestine is problematic or that it's criminalized? Well, I think the answer is that we live in a world where Palestinian identity, the idea of Palestine has been delegitimized. It, it's been delegitimized because you have this very powerful state, the Jewish state of Israel, that has been hell bent on erasing Palestine and Palestinian identity from memory and from view. And so I think ultimately, like, it's precisely because that we have this state and these people who are hell bent on destroying an entire other culture's identity that we have to look and, and ask ourselves, like, OK, well, what is Palestine? Let's talk. Let's right. talk through this concept. Let's try and understand it.